Welcome to the second episode of European Schoolnet's podcast series. This is a podcast produced to inspire the educational community with stories, best practices and testimonials about how innovation and technology make an impact in schools across Europe. Now, why do we want innovation in schools? We live in a world that is constantly changing. Everything evolves around us and education makes no difference. The future of learners and of society depends on our ability to get in step with the times, to reimagine and reshape the way we learn, what we learn and how we learn. According to the UNESCO's Future of Education report, published in November 2021, the scenario is clear. Our current global education system is failing to address some of the big societal challenges. Our planet is struggling with global warming, growing inequalities and pandemics. And at the same time, we are living an accelerated digital revolution. Education should help in shaping a peaceful, just and sustainable society. But it is still far from reaching that goal. The current education system must adapt to address these challenges effectively. But how do we make that happen? My name is Bart Verswijvel and I'm your host in this European Schoolnet's podcast episode on upscaling innovation in European schools. To answer this question, we have invited some of the ambassadors of the Future Classroom Lab initiative in three different European countries. They all work at the level of the Ministry of Education of their country. So welcome to Carla Lorenzo from Portugal. Jana Obdebeek from Flanders, Belgium, and Jose Fernandez from Spain. Welcome, Carla. Hi, hi, Bart. Welcome, Jana. Hi, hi, Bart. And welcome, Jose. Hello, Bart. Now, all three speakers of today are lead future classroom lab ambassadors for their country. They come from the 15 countries we currently have in our network and their role is to promote and support innovative pedagogical practices and to disseminate initiatives of European Schoolnet. And of course, the members of the network have a special interest in flexible learning environments as a change agent for innovation in education. Since European Schoolnet built the Future Classroom Lab on its premises in Brussels in 2012, the ideas of rethinking the traditional way of learning have been widespread in Europe, also thanks to the Future Classroom Lab ambassadors. By the way, this year, the network of Future Classroom Lab ambassadors celebrates its 10th anniversary. A good occasion, we would say, to put the ambassadors in the spotlights. Let's kick off with the first topic. Why do we, in fact, need to lead this change and bring innovation in the current educational system? I would like to give the floor to Jose from Spain. Okay, thank you, Bart. Um, innovation uh, is quite important in, in, in schools, as, uh, in my opinion, they reflect the society. They are, in fact, small societies that bring together all of the uh, uh, factors and all of the, the, the things that you can find in society. And society is evolving very fastly and very quickly, and, and schools need to adapt. To that, uh, to that innovation and to that uh, evolution. Um, as future classroom ambassadors in, in our project, I think that we bring together all of these innovations and all of these different parts that are taking place. For example, that you know that at present, we have artificial intelligence that is starting just knocking the door at the schools and, and at the work of the students and the teachers. And, and that's why uh, the schools need to be innovating in that sense. In our case, as FCL ambassadors, we can bring these uh, a new innovation, uh, which is uh, artificial intelligence, to to uh, to the schools. Moreover, as um, as ambassadors, we are bringing together not only the technological innovation, but also the methodological part. That's 
that is the application of that into the school. So we are really uh, a good reference or we are really good uh, items that could, can help uh, schools to bring innovation into their, their teaching and learning practices every day. Okay, thank you. And then uh, we can go to Jana from uh, Flanders, Belgium. What's your view on the topic? We all have the same goals. We want to prepare our learners to use technology and to know more about current innovations in a way that it makes sense. As Jose said, we want to prepare them for this fast evolving society, not only for the future, but also for the present. It's important for us to support schools, to support teachers and students by using this technology so the learning gains can be optimized. Um, the support goes broader than learning how to use technology. What do we have to know about being a digital citizen? What are my digital rights and responsibilities? For me, innovation can help schools. It can help teacher training centers, um, current teachers to strengthen our students in this modern world. Okay, nice. And then we go to uh, Carla from Portugal. Um, thank you. Well, I couldn't agree more with Jose and, and Diana. Uh, um, in fact, a school has always been um, um, asked to respond to the challenge of society. So in this in its social function, um, it, uh, school needs to address the challenges of the, the, the present and the future. So in this uh, in this field, innovation is important not not by itself, but to get the most out of the students. And uh, for that purpose, I think the digital uh, can bring uh, several answers. And uh, the FCL, so all this work that has been uh, developed, can give students, can give the teachers uh, ways, uh, pathways how to develop the digital uh, within the the curriculum development, so that the students can learn more uh, and better. That's why in Portugal we are uh, in fact in present um, well after three and a half years of digital development of teachers within a teacher training process uh, that is a priority to the government in, because uh, our focus is not only to achieve better learning but uh, moreover to prepare uh, the, the citizens not only for the future but for the present. Now, I would like to elaborate uh, a bit on this and uh, anyone who wants to uh, answer the question, uh, go ahead. How do you see in general the role of education beyond the time the students spend on their education at school? What is according to you the role of schools to society in general? Well, uh, as mentioned, uh, school is always asked, as mentioned, uh, to uh, address the challenges of societies, you know, the challenges that both students and uh, adults uh, um, are facing. So I think schools need to reinvent themselves. And when you think about, when you talk about innovation, uh, we are talking about innovation uh, for a while ago, you know, and uh, we need to have things happening in schools. And that is the, 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 main, the main focus of, of our work is that things happen in classroom and not it stays at, as an uh, overview uh, uh, purpose that is not, uh, in fact, a uh, reality in the in each classroom of the country. So that is the main focus: to get better learning uh, of our students, to get the best out of our students, and to redesign the learning um, the learning scenarios, the learning environments, uh, the, the what schools has to offer, how schools offers to the students, because otherwise, um, school will uh, will face some troubles in the future. Okay, great. Uh, anyone else who wants to uh, build on this? If not, I, I, we... I do agree with Carla, definitely. Um, the schools need to readapt and need to respond to reality and need to respond to the needs of the students. So the needs of the students do not only take place in the schools, but uh, it's an, as a need for society itself. And society is more than the school. Um, so this is the way the education is going to go further and to go outside the boundaries of the school itself. That is by responding to the, to the needs of the student. Okay, let's uh, move on and uh, let's go back to your role as FCL Future Classroom Lab Ambassador. Did you encounter in your work uh, challenges or obstacles? Can you talk uh, about it, uh, Jose? Well, um, 
I, I wouldn't say obstacles, but uh, you need to take into account when you're dealing with innovation uh, that you're dealing with people, you're dealing with persons, you're dealing with teachers, and you're dealing with the students. So uh, innovation needs the uh, development of the competence of the teachers, for example, as Carla mentioned, was mentioning before about the training of the teachers. This is essential, the training of teachers. But we need to take into account that is we are training persons. And this takes some time. Um, uh, it's not really an obstacle, but it's something that you need to take into account. Uh, moreover, um, we need uh, a framework that facilitates this innovation in the schools. This framework is provided sometimes because the uh, the school is uh, building, for example, a digital plan or any type of document that establishes the basis so that innovation is possible or promoted in, in everyday practice. In the case of Spain, for example, all schools are, are designing their own digital plans, which is adapted to their own context because innovation can be just treated in a general way but it is different from school to school because they are different environment and different settings. Um, so probably the best thing to take into account or the, the, the advantage in Spain that we had is the, the, the digital plan that the schools are designing. And not an obstacle, but something we need to take into account is that we are dealing with people. Okay, great. And um, Jana, what's your story? I totally agree with uh, Jose. It takes time to innovate, to strengthen ourselves, teachers, students, with new competences. Um, on this moment in Flanders, we have an enormous lack of teachers. Not all schools are ready to innovate as much, despite their good intentions. Um, when there is a lack of teachers, there are some other challenges they have to face. Uh, another challenge we try to address is the ICT policy plan. We support schools by giving them templates, by giving them good practices to strengthen them in their current way of working and to support them to think about investments for the future. In a lot of schools in Flanders, there is only one person uh, responsible for making this ICT policy plan for, for helping the teachers, the parents, the students in the use of ICT. We encourage schools to do a transition to ICT teams so that these tasks can be shared among several people so they can reinforce each other. And I guess also uh, Carla faces challenges in Portugal. Um, when you face challenges according to the, when you think about the Portuguese, when you think about the Portuguese, the Portuguese society and the Portuguese um, schools, I would say that uh, challenges need to be addressed uh, in a very strategic way. So one side, we needed to address the teacher's comp digital competences. So develop the teacher digital competences. That is something that to give comfort to teachers and to make them feel more, um, you know, more to feel that, to see that digital is uh, not only friendly, you know, but is useful. That is very important. No one changes because it's a uh, fashion. People change when it's useful for, and, and if they see an advantage in changing. Because when you think about innovation, we'll some somehow we are thinking about changing practices. You know, this crystallized practice that we're always talking about. Uh, we are talking about the student-centered pedagogies since centuries ago. Uh, and, and sometimes we look at schools and what we see in the classrooms, uh, it's not quite what we expected to see. It's not the teacher's fault because it's where they feel more comfortable. So what we need to do is, moreover, to the teacher training, is to develop the digital uh, within a holistic approach in schools. That's why, the, like Jose mentioned before, that's why the digital action plans for schools are so important because they, they, they get people, the old intervenients, all the stakeholders see the digital development in a holistic approach, not all pedagogical approach, but also organizational approach and, of course, digital and technological approach. And bringing those three together, uh, this is one, st one step further to make teachers to feel comfortable by innovating, you know, because they see that the peers are also innovating. And that is very important to see the context. Moreover, <laughs> not finished yet, sorry, <laughs> but also to mention the importance, the extreme importance of all the capacity building that uh, is uh, taking place. 
and uh, in that purpose, I would like to speak about the Navigator MOOC uh, that we have translated, and it was precious for our teachers. And why? Because it's practical. You know, it shows examples how they can develop the curriculum in a very practical way, answering specific questions, designing specific learning scenarios regarding their own reality. And only then, only when you adapt innovation to each context, each, each reality, you know, things happen. Thanks a lot. Now, maybe we should move on to your strategy and your lessons learned and your best practices. How do you organize in your national uh, Ministry of Education the uh, upscaling of innovation? What is your strategy that you uh, bring into practice, Jose? Well, it is uh, really, uh, uh, Scala said, a holistic approach. Um, we deal here with what we call um, educational competence. The educational competence is not only teacher competence or a student competence, but also school competence. So uh, we bring all together in order to promote this, uh, this innovation and this change and this evolution. Um, in order to, to to deal with them, we are promoting a lot of training for teachers. We have adapted uh, the, um, the Digcom Edu uh, framework for teachers to the Spanish reality, and we have also we have a framework with different levels, and we are uh, giving accreditations to teachers uh, so they know the level of digital competence they have, and uh, giving them also some uh, teacher training so that they can. Uh, go on improving their, their level. Um, we have also uh, reviewed or revisited the, the curriculum for students and, and we include again digital competence as one uh, of the competencies to be uh, dealt with in, in schools. Uh, and also we are just uh, dealing with the school competence thanks to the digital plans that they are devising. Apart from that, we also uh, give some uh, importance to the, to the resources that they have available. So we are promoting free resources, uh, quality resources that they can use as examples in the class and they can adapt. So we also create resources. And apart from that, we also take a view to the uh, advanced digital competencies. What we were talking at the beginning about artificial intelligence or robotics or computational thinking. So giving the opportunity to all those teachers that need to bring these competencies into the classrooms to, uh, to get involved in projects or in specific training so that uh, it, this is made uh, easier for them. And Jose, uh, you also, I think, uh, use the instrument of the Future Classroom Lab Toolkit. Uh, yes. Can you briefly explain this? Yes, we use the toolkit as a pedagogical tool uh, so that um, uh, the schools know where we are, where they are, sorry, not we, but they, where they are, where they want to go. They uh, analyze the reality, they analyze the moment they are in and uh, decide the movement they want, also as a tool for um, real practice in the in the classroom by designing uh, learning scenarios and, and activities that can be used. We, in fact, are um, um, providing some of these uh, scenarios and activities in the national web that we have for the Future Classroom Lab, uh, so that uh, other teachers can can use them and. Um, most teachers think uh, having these type of tools is quite useful because it is not only uh, the need for theory just to tell you this is like this or like that but also to have very specific and um, practical tools that you can use to to make things real thank you uh, by the way this uh, fcl toolkit you can find on our website it's free to download it's available in several languages and it is indeed, like uh, Jose said, a tool to mainstream innovation in schools and in institutes. And it uh, gives you a, a tips and tricks and a strategy to bring this into practice. Now let's go to uh, Flanders, Belgium, with uh, Jana. And uh, we would like to hear from uh, your strategy to bring innovation in your region. 
In Flanders, we have the DigiSprong Action Plan. The key elements of the action plan include strengthening the ICT infrastructure in schools, supporting the development of an ICT vision and policy plan, access to and development of uh, digital learning resources and platforms, and strengthening the ICT competences of teachers and school leaders. Um, for strengthening the ICT infrastructure, we made sure that schools of compulsory education were able to buy digital devices for students and teachers. We facilitated a better network connectivity by providing a framework agreement. For supporting the development of an ICT vision and policy plan, we developed a toolkit with instruments such as a budget planner, action planner for goals and priorities, and thematic action sheets. Um, as I mentioned before, we also support the transition from an ICT coordinator to an ICT team in schools. We made access to digital resources and platforms easier by developing a single sign-on application called LearID. Students can get into several platforms by using one username and one password. And we also have the unique platform for teachers called Classament. It's a platform where they can find trainings, materials, websites, exercises, and they can also share own created material with others. With our XR action plan, we made it possible for technical and vocational secondary schools to bring XR in their lessons. And we also adapted the DigCompedi framework, as Jose also mentioned, to the Flemish context. Um, we are strengthening the digital competences of teachers by using this framework. We made our own self-reflection tool, DigiSnap, based on selfie for teachers, to use as a self-reflection instrument um, as a school or as a teacher. Teachers' competence level is linked with several existing trainings uh, after filling in DigiSnap. And we also organize and boot camps to help uh, the ICT coordinators, school teams, ICT teams in the digital uh, transition. Thank you. And then we hop again to uh, Portugal with uh, Carla. Can you explain what you're doing in uh, Portugal? Um, yes, uh, I'll, I'll try to summarize. So we have, we are now uh, with more than three and a half years of digital transition action plan at national level. Uh, so uh, we didn't, uh, we also have adapted the, the dish comp uh, edu to the, well, we didn't adapt the dish comp edu well, we adapt the teacher training according to the six levels of DigComp Edu, uh, digital proficiency level. We have uh, defined three digital levels and the teachers, we have now uh, at the present moment more than 70% of the all teachers at national level that have, um, um, that have concluded with success these uh, this, um, workshops uh, at level one, two and three. And also, and moreover, they have also developed and attended other, other actions of digital development. Uh, at national level. So this is a huge program that is involving, it is also a huge investment of the teachers themselves, not only of the entities that are developing. Uh, and these entities are the teacher training centers. We have 91 teacher training centers at national level and they are, they are doing this work uh, in the regional uh, field. But uh, also important, moreover, uh, more than moreover, the teacher training is the the, the digital development, as mentioned before, at school level. And that is also a lesson learned. Uh, this was very important for them to use a selfie tool, for them to, uh, to assess themselves at digital development, and also not at the beginning, but also now, uh, after a while, after three years uh, or three years of digital development, they have to redesign their plans and rethink that after this huge investment, not only on technology in schools, but also of the digital um, training of teachers, uh, what is different now? What do, do, do they need to do different in a different way? And uh, some, sometimes we need to redirect our actions, like, for example, the teacher training, uh, because somehow we realized that was not really focus on the curriculum development. So we have designed uh, models, we have designed brochures of development showing the teacher trainings how to develop, how to use the digital in several areas of the curriculum. Do you know, for them to see the practical side of the, once more, the practical side of the digital. Uh, that's something very important. Moreover, we are now uh, also uh, installing digital educational labs uh, we are going to install 1,300 digital education labs at national level. So all schools since grade, uh, five, five, since grade 5 to grade 12 are going to have digital educational labs. 
that also uh, intend to address the curriculum development. Uh, this is always our focus. Uh, once more, um, I never, I'm never tired to say that because it's always our purpose. You know, our purpose is to improve learning of our students. Our purpose is to, the learning process, not digital in, by itself. And also, we are also building digital educational resources uh, in the open source uh, for all the subjects of the curriculum, you know, for them once more to show, to give practical, the practical side of the use of digital uh, for, for teachers and students to use them. Uh, something very, very important, in order to scaffold all this work, uh, we have realized that we need to build networks at regional level. So we have now a, a mentoring uh, program uh, installed uh, at national level, but in regional, in regional spots where schools get together, more, uh, more particularly within the project of a pilot project of digital textbooks that we are running. And they get together, they talk about uh, how to use, uh, how to develop uh, digital education resources, the digital textbooks. So it's where the digital is really happening. But moreover, it's where the, the organizational development and pedagogical development is really happening uh, in, this, in this moment within this uh, mentoring uh, program. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I would like to go back to the concept of the future classroom lab. And I wanted to ask you, how is this concept incorporated in your daily work to upscale innovation in your country? Would you like to start uh, with that uh, again, uh, Jose? Okay. Um, it's, it's not that difficult because you know that the three basics in, in the Future Classroom Lab is the methodology on the one hand, digital uh, means or digital devices on the other. And on the other, we are talking also about the spaces. Spaces, which is something uh, brought into the equation, uh, which is not that usual, but is something that really um, worries uh, the, the schools and, and, and the teachers. They do really like spaces where they can teach better and uh, in a more active way. So, um, as this innovation that we are uh, carrying out in, in, in Spain has a lot to do with active methodologies and digital pedagogies and digital means, uh, we really include in a very easy way all of this into the Future Classroom uh, offer in, in, in Spain. Not only in the training, but also in the support we give to schools and to teachers. Carla has mentioned really a very important point that is, it is uh, really difficult, yes, to manage all of these from a national point of view, but we need regional uh, networks or even um, communities of practice. And, and this brings in a, a very important concept into the equation that is the idea of educational community. If we are just to uh, provide the students with the best educational practice, we need to believe that we are an educational community, starting from the ministry, then the regions, then the schools, parents, etc. And uh, this is something that is also brought into the, the concept of the future classroom also very easily. It is quite attractive because it responds to the needs that they have now in the implementation of curriculums. Thank you. And uh, Jana, how does the Future Classroom Lab concept play a role in your work as ambassador? Yes, I totally agree with what uh, Jose is telling. Um, I think the FCL is not reinventing the wheel as a digital initiative in education. Um, it's, it's bringing all digital best practices together. So I, I totally agree. Good. Uh, then uh, we move on to Carla again. Uh, I would say that, well, within this uh, initiative of Digital Education Labs, we are, uh, well, FCL is not giving the floor, but giving floor, <laughs> giving floor for the, the practice, because what we are doing, we are building learning scenarios uh, with this technology. Uh, directed to the development of the several services of the curriculum uh, uh, alone and together. So we are also doing an um, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach uh, within within this. But it's giving us the the knowledge the knowledge to better uh, build learning scenarios more adapted 
to the technology, but uh, curriculum focused scenario. So really, we are we are now uh, building um, and making it available in our website because schools are starting to to use this digital educational labs. But uh, all this knowledge that, uh, as mentioned before, we we don't need to to start from scratch. So we we need we have all this this knowledge that was built during uh, ten years uh, uh, that is helping us, giving us support, scaffolding us to to the next step. Uh, and our next step is to show the teachers and the schools how to make the best of the this, this digital educational labs in order to address the, 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 the curriculum of each subject. I didn't say before, but it's something very important I would like to mention that within this teacher training, teachers that were placed, more, uh, the medium, uh, the average um, digital proficiency level was B1. And, and after we have done an assessment study, and after this assessment study, we have realized that there was a jump to the B2 uh, digital education, uh, digital level, D digital teacher, oh God, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> to the digital digital proficiency level. Uh, of teachers, so it's it's it shows us also um, the you know we need to assess what we are doing. That is very important for us to see if there is an impact. And what we are now trying to do, we also done a, in a study about the impact of the digital action plans in schools, uh, and we have realized also we have confirmed the importance of working uh, in the field uh, in the context, working in regions, working in with working in school, uh, but. But uh, now, giving um, going back to our national perspective, I would say that the FCL uh, is helping us a lot uh, in all this process of building uh, um, these old learning scenarios. It is all designing, designing the the learning spaces, the learning um, activities, uh, in order to show schools how to be how it can be uh, done. We have arrived at the last question of uh, today and I wanted to uh, ask you all, how do you see the future of education in general? And uh, secondly, I want to hear from you your next steps you would uh, like to bring to practice to make changes possible in schools. And again, we start with uh, Jose. Uh, well, the future, the future of education is is now really changing. I mean, uh, we are really uh, living a changing time in in education with a lot of uh, new uh, new things, especially uh, connected to to uh, technologies. Uh, I think that the future is a good one because there is really a great involvement of teachers in these changes and in these innovations. They really want to include these things and that's why probably they get involved in so many trainings or mentoring as, as Carla was mentioning. And uh, schools are trying to organize as entities to provide a setting for this education uh, for society. So uh, the future is something that is going to be seen in probably uh, the next years, but it's going to be a changing one, innovative one, uh, independently because now we are having some some new additions such as artificial intelligence, but nobody knows how it's going to happen in terms of time. So it's going to be a changing and adapting one. And do we have something in particular that uh, you will try out or bring into practice? You, 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 you mentioned today. Your organization? I think that uh, we will go on uh, with the same support to teachers uh, through training, also by providing them with their ideas, resources, and frameworks that they need to, uh, to be able to tackle these changes and these uh, challenges that they are going to be facing in the, in the next years. OK, thanks. And then uh, Jana? Now we have been working on digitalization in schools for years and we see positive results. Um, we should continue to support schools and teachers in using ICT and strengthening competences. Now extra attention will be paid at uh, AI, cybersecurity, XR, um, also strengthening the teacher training centers using the Digi Competitive Framework is, is one of our uh, priorities. And the attack world, it keeps on growing, and that's a, that's a good thing. They have a big role, but schools don't have to follow the attack. It's, it's important that the attack take a look at schools and take a look at education. Um, we are part of the Empower Ed project from European Schoolnet 
in any case, schools should be able to, to choose from enough platforms and learning resources to suit their needs and tools and, and combine those platforms and tools smoothly. Um, that too is one of the reasons why we, um, the Knowledge Center Digisprong from the Flemish government joined Empowered. Also an extra focus on those who are vulnerable, uh, having extra attention for digital inclusion and uh, online safety, media literacy. Uh, those are some things also that we want to continue and focus on for the future. So I understand there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, we go to Portugal finally. And uh, uh, how do you look at the future, Carla? Well, uh, quite a question <laughs> to finish the debate. Uh, but, um, well, um, I would say that um, I couldn't agree more with Jose once more in Yana, but um, because the future of education, it remains the same, I would say so. Uh, and and, and as, as I started, uh, the school needs to address uh, the challenges that the students are facing uh, now. Because we know that uh, in, uh, we don't know what's going to happen uh, uh, next month. <laughs> you know, like we need to be prepared. We need to prepare our students for for these times. The times are different, but it, it, regardless of the times, education was always and is always the the the, the main the main the, is its main own goal is to prepare students for society. Regardless, of, we're speaking about the present or of the future. So this, having this said, uh, I would say that a very important thing uh, is to give this, the teachers and the students the floor and give them the voice to speak and to say what they think should the school should be. We have an initiative in here uh, at the Ministry of Education that is we have invited schools, we have invited students to um, to speak about what they, they would see they would see um, they could change in their, their school. And uh, we were surprised with the amazing uh, critics, concentric critics that they have made and, and suggestions too, to what could be changed in school. Uh, so we need sometimes to, you know, to, um, to give more the floor to students because they have a very critical view about school and what they need of school. Because it's also, we have to, when we speak about the future of education, we need to maybe to ask the students themselves what is for them the future of education. Uh, what is for the student the future? What does it want for the school uh, for, for the disease development or development? So the focus on the students, the focus on the teachers, give them the floor to share, share practices. I wouldn't say best practice, I would say practices of of reference, their practices, their lessons learned, what they have learned, what they failed, what all they have achieved, uh, you know, big achievements. And so give them the floor and show that uh, everyone uh, fails sometimes, uh, once in a while, you know, uh, they need to, to, to have the courage to do in the different way. So when you think about innovative actions, innovative pedagogies, you need to feel comfortable also by uh, making failures. It's, it's part of the process. So that is very important. And now, Something also very important that is that Jana also mentioned, that is the importance of inclusion uh, and also the importance of uh, preparing the students and, uh, for the society where they are already in, uh, regardless of the critical thinking of the safety online. Uh, and that is very important because we have now uh, been, been um, watching uh, some waves against digital uh, across Europe, uh, against digital in schools. but. If you think about future of education, we cannot get the digital out of education because the digital is part of the society already. So if we do that, if we if we forbid, if we go there and we forbid to have mobile phones or technology in classroom, instead of educating, schools are not doing their role of educating students for the future. So having this said, uh, once more, I think the future of education uh, we cannot uh, go away from the, the, the work that has to be done regardless of the, the digital development of our students, the critical thinking about what the school should be, uh, and also involving the teachers um, and all the entities, all the stakeholders of the community in this process. Because we have AI there and we need to focus on the human factor. The human factor is the most important one in the school community because teachers make the difference, not AI makes a difference. A teacher can be can use AI for their work, you know, to amplify their work. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is the human factor. It's the teacher that is there, that knows their students, knows the lives of their students, and is there 
helping them uh, reaching better learning, but also feeling better included in the society. Great. We have come at the end of uh, this uh, podcast episode. And of course, I want to thank the speakers of today. We had uh, Jose Luis from uh, uh, Jose Luis Fernandez from Spain. Uh, thank you. We also had uh, Jana Oudebeek from uh, Flanders, Belgium. And we also had uh, Carla Lorenzo from Portugal. And of course, I also want to thank you listeners and watchers for joining us on this insightful journey through the world of innovation and education. This was another appointment with the Future Classroom Lab Ambassadors produced by European Schoolnet. And in today's episode, we looked at innovation in education, not just as a matter of technology. We discussed about the need of reimagining how we learn and what we learn and how in concrete we can assist teachers' growth and what are the instruments we need to bring this change in classrooms. So thanks to the insights we had from the experience of our guests' countries, we also know more about the Future Classroom Lab and how its toolkit can assist the digital transformation in European countries. Around all we said today, I invite you to post your thoughts and comments to this episode to keep the conversation going. Of course, don't miss all the other European Schoolnet's news and activities. Check out and follow our various social media channels and podcast platforms. Thank you all for tuning in. Goodbye for now. Thank you.